Just some incredible moments from Bafana Bafana and Black Leopards midfielder Tuso Pala, which has made him a name that is so recognizable to so many South Africans. And it really sets the tone for today's show because you know that age old adage that goes behind every successful man is a really strong woman. Well, the first woman in any man's life is, of course, his mother. And those are the women that we are celebrating on today's show. And specifically, we have come outside of our studio in Auckland Park to the home of Susan Pala. Tuso's mother. We're going to be chatting to her in just a short while and it's so good that you have joined us for today's show because you're in for a real treat. Remember, you can get involved in our show. It's so easy. At Sport at SABC, at Lebo Mutsweri, at Bell and Kirtley, across all social media platforms. Just use our hashtag, hashtag the ladies club. Our theme for today is the reckoning force behind our successful sportsmen because it really does take dedicated, not only moms, but dads too, although today we are focusing in on the moms, it takes dedicated parents to help lay the foundation for somebody to go on to make the sport of their choice their profession. And that's what we're going to be delving into a little bit deeper today with Susan Parler. Let's meet our game changer. Hi, Susan. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'm How good. are you? I'm good. It's so wonderful. Thank you for inviting us here into your home. Welcome to the Ladies Club. It's my pleasure. What is the secret to success for any mother that wants their child to go on to be a professional sports person? Be as supportive, be honest as much as possible, and to try to know more about the sports that your child will be participating in. Okay, so knowledge and support, those are two very important yes. things. And I suppose a good dose of humour wouldn't be bad either. I think in your case, though, you need some dance moves. <laughs> the Tuso move. <laughs> so tell us where this Tuso Pala dance actually comes from. Is it, was it your baby? Did, did you inspire? Did you put it into his head? Are you guys dancers here at home? Uh, we do dance at home, okay. but uh, that one, that's his baby, that's his trademark. Uh, we are learning from him. Uh, okay, so, yes. <laughs> so has he taught you guys? Uh, actually, I saw that move on TV and then I said, I'll try to do that move. <laughs> <laughs> and when you showed him, what did he say? <laughs> and uh, I saw the thing, it was trending on the Twitter, your Instagram, I'm yeah. um, trying to do the dance. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't be like him. I'm trying my best at my age to do that. Okay, so can you show us your moves? Maybe I can teach you how to do it. <laughs> can I do it with heels? I've got some serious heels on, but I'll try anyway. Okay, you know, Susan, show me. You know, good dancers, they normally dance on their stilettos. Now you're putting me under pressure, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, show me the dance. Uh, you say one, two, one, two, and your chest back. Once you have done this, then it's easy. You see, this, this, then. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think the wrong things are shaking. <laughs> but Susan, you, 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 it's a good exercise, you know, for your shoulders, your waist, to build your, your thighs. Wait, Susan, is this what you used to do when the kids were small? You were doing acrobatics in front of the TV and then that's where he got the inspiration from. Actually, I'm a health, uh, a health coach. I normally teach people uh -huh. how to look after themselves. That's oh, all, all the secrets are coming out. <laughs> yes. Because today's show is all about celebrating mothers, let's set the tone with our quote for the day. It comes from a woman who is a Taekwondo superstar, Diana Lopez. She said, I'm very proud of my mom and consider her the most courageous woman I know. With perseverance, sacrifice and hard work, she raised a family of Olympic athletes and gave us the tools and the spirit to succeed. That's something that my brothers and I will always be thankful for. 2008 Olympic bronze medalist Diana Lopez is a champion in Taekwondo. She is the kid sister in the Lopez family, the most successful siblings in any sports in the history of the Olympic Games. In 2005, Diana and her brothers made history by becoming the first three siblings in any sport to win world titles at the same event. Diana publicly expressed that she owes her success to her mother's support.
Before we go to a break and thereafter we're going to be going inside and chatting to our game changer, let's bring you some news when it comes to women's sport. South for President Danny Odan is set to meet with the Minister of Sports, Arts, Culture and Recreation in South Africa, Nati Mtetwa, to speak about South Africa's proposed bid to host the 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup. It's incredible to see that there's so much interest around the globe. South Africa is wanting to put forward a bid and they would be one of seven countries that are interested in hosting the global showpiece. Some of the other countries that are also talking about putting forward a bid include Australia, Argentina and Brazil. Do stay with the Ladies Club. We're back after this. Welcome back. You're watching The Ladies Club. Thank you for staying with us. We're now inside the home of Susan Palo, who's Tusa Palo's mom. She is our game changer today. Remember, you can get involved in the conversation. It's so easy. On Twitter, our hashtag is The Ladies Club. And that's across all social medias, not only on Twitter, where the sports handle is at sports at SABC, at Lebo Mutswedi, at Bailing Kurti, but also on Instagram and on Facebook. Now, our game changer today is just the most incredible woman, and she's been through so much. It was back in 1999 that she lost her husband with three small children. Tuso, first born, 10 years old, her second born, eight, and then with a six-month-old baby. She didn't wallow in her sorrows. She picked herself up, and she's been instrumental in Tuso Pala's career, developing him into the great footballer that we see him today. And she herself has also been involved in football. But she'll tell us a little bit more. Uh, Susan, thank you for welcoming, uh, welcoming us into your beautiful home. Thank you so much for deciding to come and visit us. So I want to I wanna know a little bit about who you are and your involvement in football administration because I know you were even a publicist for a, a top club in South Africa. I was born in Orlando East, you know, um, a township called Soweto. And uh, I was raised by a domestic worker, you know. I don't call it... Badly, but I was privileged that uh, my mom, she was a domestic worker because I've learned so much from being a daughter for a domestic worker. And, uh, you know, during that time, uh, we were disadvantaged. There were not so many things exposed to us. The only thing that I knew, it was like going to school after school and then I would participate in house duties and uh, I'll do sports because I grew up in Houghton. That's where my mom was working. And um, at early age, I was taught to be an athlete. I played tennis. The only thing that I didn't know, even today, I'm still struggling at swimming. <laughs> and uh, I used to play football yeah. still. But uh, in a nutshell, I grew up as a sports person. Okay, so, so does uh, Tuso's skills come from you or from dad? Um, actually, I would say me because being a sports person, but you know how dads are. Every dad will tell you that uh, my son took it from me, you know, <laughs> if once play soccer. But being a sports person, growing up, participating in sports, uh, he took it from me. What other sports was he involved in? I mean, we know him very well for being a prolific midfielder. Um, he was a an, an good athlete. You know, he did use 100 metres sprint, 500 metres. And uh, he did well at school. From seven years old up until 12, okay. he was a good athlete at school. And it was also at school where he was discovered, uh, where his footballing talent was discovered. He was discovered at Houghton Primary School. Um, fate was on us because Eddie Lewis, it happens then that he was a coach at Houghton. And then he spotted Tuso at an early age. It was so amazing. And uh, he wanted to see Tuso's mom. I was called at school and then I met Eddie Lewis then. And um, his request was like, can, can you please take this boy to Vets Juniors? There's a potential in this boy. You know, I was like, what potential here? And uh, he was like, tomorrow he's going to be one of the best players. Wow. Please take this boy to Vets. 
But just to put this in perspective, this was a couple of months after you lost your husband. You've yes. got a six-month-old baby and your second-born, who's an eight-year-old young girl. Yes. I, I, I was still hurting, going through something that I cannot describe. You know, to lose your husband through hijacking. And uh, on the other side, you find that your in-laws are accusing you of something that you don't know. Uh, you know, my uncle, uh, first thing that he, he, he asked me, he said, did he do it? Uh, are you sure? Did you kill him? I said, no, I don't even have a clue, you know. How could, how could I do that, you know? But um, because of the circumstances, uh, after his death, I had to, to grow up. I had to put past in the basket. I had to focus and face reality. And uh, the reality was I need to stand up. Do I have um, to, to die or do I need something for my kids? And uh, because I had a vision when I grew up, I said I wanted to see myself somewhere else. Uh, my mom wanted me to be a doctor, but I couldn't because I had to do so. You know, um, after my husband's death, I had so many um, vision that um, despite of everything, I still have my life. And um, because of what Eddie Lewis said to me, yeah. I said, this is a seed. I need to look after the seed. And at the same time, being a spiritual person, you know, it helped to soothe my soul. It helped me to grieve in, in a certain way because I had to put Tuso here, to put God here. And together, they natured this, um, this soul that was hurting. It makes my life, my journey so easy because someone planted this vision in me that this boy tomorrow will become something. And, uh, you know, Mathlodi, um, when you look back, Mathlodi used to carry Tuso's talk bag and his soccer boots. Then I'll be carrying Mulimo on the side, going to watch Tuso. And sometimes you find that you don't even have transport money. It was a painful journey. The only life that I knew, it was being a housewife with my kids and my husband. That was the life that I knew. But wow. uh, after his death, I had to transform quickly and become something else. Tell us a little bit about your specific involvement when it comes to football, because not only were you a football mom, but you were also a publicist for Platinum Stars. Um, Tuso, when he was playing for Vets, um, he went to Highlands North Boys. He was attending school there. Okay. Uh, whilst he was there, we met a coach by the name of Lebo. Lebo, he's still with Platinum Silver Stars now. Yeah. Lebo, he was so impressed about Tuso. Uh, we met with Lebo. We discussed soccer, and then he was like, um, do you know that uh, at Silver Stars, they are looking for someone that could come and be a house mother for the young boys? Then they were playing at NFD. They went to playoffs to get promoted to PSL, Silver Stars then. And uh, whilst Tuso was still at Highlands North Boys, Tuso was invited to come and trial for Silver Stars. You under 17s. Okay. I went with Tuso to Highlands, Highlands North. Um, all the directors, they were impressed about Tuso. For me, it was this seed now is growing up. And Lebu, he said to me, I'll talk to Larry Brickstone. Larry, he's the CEO of Highlands North. I'll talk to him so that you can become a house mother, so that you can come and look after these boys. You know what, the opportunity was there for me. I took the opportunity with both hands. And um, I told Larry that uh, I want to break the, 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 this football industry. Can you please give me an opportunity to work as your admin and become your PRO? 
remember then it was your Alex Chakwane, it was all men, you know, talking about football. Can you make a difference? Give me a chance. And then he was like, but uh, do you know anything about soccer? I said, yes, please just give me a chance. Give me six months probation if I'm not doing well and then I'll go back to the original work. And I was given an opportunity. And how long did you stay in the position? Uh, I've worked as a PRO for, for a year. And then I was converted to sports admin. Thereafter, I saw I became your team manager. I became your kit manager. You know, oh, wow. <laughs> I've done everything. I wanted to learn more. And at one stage, I learned how to play the game also. And uh, today, I consider myself as one, even if I'm not qualified, one as the best coaches, because uh, you won't tell me anything about soccer. I will tell you, you don't have to take your boy for trials for, for an hour. It just takes five minutes to spot that that's a good player. One touch, it tells you. This is how. Because another thing you must remember, I've worked with most good coaches. Your Steve Compella, Kevin Johnson, Owen Takama, Alan Fries. You know, wow. that's how I, I consider myself as one of the coaches sitting on the in your kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> she's dynamic and she's incredibly honest and strong. Couple of adjectives to describe Tuso Palo's mom, Susan. She is our game changer on the ladies club today. Do stay with us. The final part is coming your way after this. Welcome back to the final part of today's edition of The Ladies Club. Thank you so much for staying with us as our theme for the program is the reckoning force behind the success of sportsmen. And it's a special show because we're outside of our studio in Auckland Park and we're inside the home of Susan Pala, Tuso Pala's mom. But she herself is quite a prolific, not only talent scout, but also football administrator. Before we continue our conversation with our game changer, let's tell you about our trailblazer. She is the mom of 400 meter world record holder Wade van Niekerk, Odessa Swartz, who just a couple of weeks ago was inducted into the G Sports Hall of Fame. She is an anti-apartheid athletics heroine when in her day she held six different records at both provincial and national level. We salute you Odessa Swartz. I just mentioned our trailblazer, also another very strong woman herself having been involved in sport. Uh, who would you say you've looked up to and who's been a source of strength for you? Um, I loved Winnie Mandela. I loved her strength. I love the character in that woman, you know. She is one of the bravest women that I've known. And uh, I said, when I grew up, I just wanted to be like that person. I wanted to be brave, face life with no fear, you know. That's the woman that I reckon is my a role model. And would you say that that has given your children a lot of strength, you leading by example? Uh, I taught my kids that um, in life there are no shortcuts. You know, if you want something, you need, you need to work for it. You need to be um, honest with yourself. What actually do you want? And um, we had golden rules whereby we say you don't steal. You don't take something that does not belong to you. And uh, if you work hard towards your goal, it will be for keeps. No one will take that away from you. Uh, actually, and uh, if you have God on your side, God will shower you with his mercy because you've been an honest person. This is how I brought up my kids. We have nothing, but if we work towards that, we'll have something tomorrow. That was our tagline most of the time. Uh, when I came into your home, I said, you're a very rich woman. You've got uh, three children and four grandchildren. You said, no, no, I've got almost 30 children that I look after. Um, uh, I brought up uh, your Mandla Masango. He used to play for Keza Chiefs. I brought up Mandla. Uh, I took Mandla to school. 
uh, Levi Mokotu, he was staying with us in this house. <laughs> he played for Kaiser Chiefs. Uh, Tabiso Semenya is one of my kids. Your Vuyo Mere, I raised so many kids. Today they are men and fewer girls because I grew up with boys and I worked in a uh, men industry. And uh, the passion was always with boys. Sure, and that's with the Tuso Pala Academy. That's how Tuso Pala Academy was brought up. And that academy runs from your family home, the home that you grew up in, in Orlando East? Yes, the, the, the home that I grew up, the home that had history, whereby you know that your Manta Masango was there, your Levi Mokotu was there, you know, at one stage, Fadlu Davis, the assistant coach. I brought up Fadlu. Oh my word. <laughs> And um, I, I said to, to, to myself, I'm not going to change that house. I'm not going to change any face of that house because we have history in that house. We have a status in your SAB league whereby some of these kids, they play there. We make sure that they go to school. I, I, I don't know, maybe this is a God-given calling, maybe. I don't know. I think so. And I think all of the, the men or the boys that have become men that you have helped and the girls that have become women would say the same thing. You know, sometimes when you, you, you are struggling in life, you wish that you could have someone that could come and assist you. What is your, the way that you just kick back and actually regroup? Once in a month, I'll go out with girls have girls chat, start to relate with the outside world. And uh, besides that, I'll come. I have a study room there. That's where I relax. That's where, you know, I refresh my mind. And if you could wrap up your, your vision for, for the future and what you still want to achieve, what is it? In football industry, that we could have um, your programs whereby we develop our soccer players because it's so sad. It's, it's, it's a painful journey. We have so many talented players, but today they are nowhere. It's because they never had your backup support as parents. And the second one, it's your... Most of talented players, they don't want to go to school. Meaning that if you are not good academic, you need to have a plan B. That's your trade skills. If we could empower them with trade. Trade, it means you, you use your hands, you know. Uh, once you use your hands, you'll have something for a living. Miss Susan, you know, I always feel sometimes when we come to the end of a show, we just don't have enough time. I'm sure that our viewers also feel they would love to hear a little bit more of your insight, but what they have heard certainly has inspired them. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. It's my pleasure, and uh, thank you so much. That is Susan Parlow. Wow, wow, wow. And this is how we come to the end of today's show. Remember, you can send us your ideas of people you would like to see on The Ladies Club. Who is it? Well, our media details are at the bottom of the screen. Please do get in touch. And until we meet again, remember that greatness is never given, it's always earned. From myself and the entire Ladies Club team, goodbye.